Welcome to the live Bible study hosted by Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Tonight, you'll learn truths from the Word with believers around the globe. Submit any questions you have in the comments and share this broadcast tonight with your friends. Hello, I'm Andrew Womack and I've got Carrie Pickett here with me and we are here for our Tuesday night live Bible study. If you don't know Carrie, Carrie and her husband, Mike, are over all of our Bible colleges worldwide. And also I think we have 16 foreign offices. Is that right? Yep, AWM offices. And so they are in charge of that. And they have been just a super blessing Amen. to us. She came to us when she was just a little girl and spent 16 years in Russia and has been back here for four years. And boy, they are a blessing. And she's our host. She's the one that gives you all the information. But you know, tonight, I'm going to do something different. I was praying about what to share tonight. And last week, we had our first week of Karis Bible College. And I ministered on Tuesday, I think it was. And then Wednesday, I made television programs. But when I came back on Thursday, I had at least half a dozen people come up. And this one lady in particular says, man, I've been a Christian for I don't even know how many years. And um, she says, I thought I knew that God loved me, but I heard Mike and Carrie minister on the love of God. And she said, my life is completely changed. Amen. And she was delivered and set free from things she didn't even know. And I had about five or six other people come up and say the same thing. So as I was praying tonight, I said, Carrie, you need to teach. <laughs> I want to hear it. Okay. And I'm going to, so I'm asking <laughs> Carrie to do the Bible study. So I am now your host. So I'm the... He's not nearly as cute, but he'll do I a good was job. just going to say, <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. So let me give you some instructions. We want you to participate and you can go to our website, awmi.net and do slash Bible study. And you can actually uh, sign up for a giveaway. We have a giveaway every week. This uh, week, it's one year with Jesus in the Gospels. This is a devotion that I wrote, uh, 365 devotions in here taken from our living commentary, or from, let's see, back then I called it Life for Today, Life for today. commentary. And this is really good. So I've already autographed this. And if you go to awmi.net slash Bible study, fill out the form, you will be entered into a drawing and we will send you the notes from tonight's Bible study. We will make notes. I'm sure she, Carrie has notes. She's got copious notes. <laughs> and uh, we will send you her notes, which will be a blessing. It'll be automatic. And also you'll be entered into this drawing. And last week's winner, do we have that here? Where is I, I've got to have help. Francisco. <laughs> yeah, you pronounce Vernus. that one. Vernus. Vernus. <laughs> and anyway, you won the power of the gospel, grace the power of the gospel, and so we'll be sending that out to you. So you can participate in that way, but also we ask you to uh, write in questions. And if you go to awmi.net slash Bible study, you can put your questions right there, or I don't even... No. So wherever forum that you're I've watching... I've already <laughs> been kicked out of my... All right, tell them how to Whatever do forum this. that you're watching on right now, whether it's Andrew Womack Ministries or Facebook Live or anything like that, just go down to the chat section and send in your questions. I will answer all the easy ones. Andrew will answer all the hard ones. It's a great relationship. You so. know, this is pitiful <laughs> that I have to have you correct me. <laughs> Well, okay. anyway, whatever it takes. So let me announce that we are going to have an In God We Trust rally this coming Saturday. And we've got Dr. Lance Wall now will be speaking with me. Also, our state senator, our state representative are both yep. speaking. We have over 20 different organizations that are doing things. In Colorado, the liberals have taken over the House, the Senate, and the governorship. And they have been ramming through a lot of really Yep. really bad things. And I was just talking to our, our state representative uh, two days ago on the phone and they have some legal things happening. So they've got things going. So this is a rally. Uh, we've invited the um, news media and stuff to come. It's going to be held here at our place, but we are not only making a statement, we've got these 20 something organizations and people are getting involved in recall elections and all kinds of things. And we're trying to turn people out to vote and we're going to turn this 
state back. Amen. So we would encourage you to pray about that. And if you're anywhere close, we would love to have you come. Right now, I think we have somewhere around 1,500 or so that I've heard uh, that are registered to come. Mm -hmm. But we can seat twice that many. So please come and be a part of that. If you can, we've also got our ministers conference coming up September the 30th through October the 4th. Uh, I encourage you, even if you aren't in full-time ministry, please send your pastors, the leaders of your churches. Yeah. We see awesome things happen. And I mean, people's lives are changed. Yeah. Greg Moore, the man who is the director of our Caris Bible College here in Colorado Springs, his life was totally changed when he came to a minister's conference back in the 80s. Yeah. And we've established relationship. Now here we are ministering together. So it's really a good time. I'd encourage you to do that. We have Women Arise coming up November the 7th through the ninth, and this is a women's conference. And I tell you, we've been having some awesome things happen. I think this year, who are the ladies that we have? Uh, uh, Sue Sheriff. Um, Which some people may not know her, but Dwayne Sheriff and Sue are some of the greatest ministers in this nation. Yeah, they are excellent. You'll and love so it. Sue's gonna be sharing. And then James Brown wife. Dorothy. Dorothy, thank you. Man, so Dorothy, she's awesome. Yeah, Dorothy is, she's a powerhouse. So Dorothy's gonna be See, sharing as well. See, I can't even do the announcements without you. Now she can teach without me, but I. <laughs> I can't do the announcement without her. So what does that say? That says that she's better at this than I am. <laughs> anyway, so we got Women Arising. We have our special Esther, a new musical that's coming out, and it will be on November the 9th. It's just one day only, this first uh, performance of it. Yeah. And if you've never been to one of our musicals, I tell you, they are awesome. Yeah. So I've already mentioned the giveaway. I've told you about it. You can ask questions and leave that. You can visit. Um, they can call in. You can call in. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the number is 719-635-1111. And we probably have 30 or 40 people over there right now answering the phones. And we'll be mentioning things. And Carrie's got materials and teaching. And if you call in, they can give you that information about her stuff. Also, this is a viewer-supported broadcast. It does cost us around $2,000 per broadcast in order to make this happen. And we would love to invite you to be a part of that yeah. and participate with us. You can go to our helpline, 719-635-1111, and they can help you. You can go to awmi.net and uh, backslash give, or you can text give to 719-301-2552. Nice. And click on the give button. And I believe that's it. If you want prayer, they got people that'll pray for you. And now, and now I am really excited yeah. to hear you talk about the love of God. <laughs> you know, you spoke at our ministers conference last year on this, and I was really impressed because some of you don't minister constantly, but when you minister on something that is as simple as the love of God, everybody thinks, I know this. Yeah. And they just immediately like, oh no, the love of God again, <laughs> which yeah. is the greatest thing you can ever talk about. And yeah. yet you took a subject that people think they knew mm -hmm. and you really showed them yeah. what it is to experience the love of God. And so yeah. this is important. I'm really excited to share this and it's an honor. So thank you, Andrew, for letting me do this. Uh, you know, one of the things I love about God's love is that it it's never ending. And I think that's one of the things that can happen is we get this idea of the love of God as the Sunday school message, you know, John 3, 16, you know, we learn it, we memorize it, we get our gold star or our prize, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And and we think that's a Sunday school message that, okay, so God's loved, I got saved, now I need to go into more spiritual things. Not realizing that the love of God is the foundation for every spiritual truth, every intimate uh, part of your day, hearing God's voice, walking in faith, receiving your healing, it all goes back to the foundation of God's love. And this is why there's such an attack on, on the message of God's love, because God's love is connected to his nature. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it talks about God is love. So he's talking about it's his very nature. It's his personality. Everything is driven out of that, not just a quality, but out of the personhood of love. So every thought he thinks towards you is based on his love for you. Every, uh, everything he's ever done for you, every promise he's ever given you, every command that's ever been given you has all been given out of his love. But there's such an attack on the love of God and the nature of God. And that's why religion and, and so many people that have been Christians for years and years, and maybe you're one of those, 
you've, you man, you, you, you're trying to serve in church and you're trying to do and give and, and, and bless, and you're trying to fulfill a call of God on your life or seek the call of God on your life. And it constantly is frustrating because what happens is a lot of times the message of God's love gets, it, it sounds like this. Brothers and sisters, if you love God, you're going to give today like you've never given before. If you love God, we're going to show up on Saturday night. We're going to evangelize. We're going to go down on the streets. If you love God, be here early. If you love God, you're going to bless our little ones and you're going to volunteer for children's ministry. And so what happens is that if you love God, you need to perform and you need to give and you need to serve. And because we have this fallen mentality of, of just how humans treat each other, like if I treat you good, you're going to treat me good. If I razz him, I'm pretty much going to give Get razzed Absolutely. back. It's it's just the rule, right? And so, you know, if if you don't show up to work and you're constantly like you're going to get demoted, you show up to work, you perform, you do good, you're going to get promoted. And so, we put this humanistic style of give. If if I, I give, uh, I love you. If I love you, when I love you, because. And so, you know, that, and we can see that in marriage or we can see that I love you when you help me take out the trash and I love you because you buy me stuff and I love you if, you know, so there's all these qualifiers. And if you break my trust, well then boy, you better earn it back. You better show me you're worthy of my love, my attention, my money, whatever it is. And so we apply that same fallen understanding of love to the love of God. Well, now there are some scriptures that say that if you hearken diligently and observe to do all of these mm -hmm. commandments, then I will bless you, et cetera, et cetera. How do you deal with that? Well, I think that's the thing is if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And so there's this idea of, of, of then how we keep the commandments saying, if we love him, yes, we're going to do that. But we go back to that. We love him because he first loved us. See what religion does is says, okay, you've got to do it all out of your own strength and your own power. And God's just sitting up there saying, man, maybe you're good today. Maybe you're not good. And then, oh, hey, I'm really good today. But then I sit next to Andrew and I'm never, I'm not going to be good enough. Right. Right. Cause we compare you know, ourselves. You may never get to teach on this program again. <laughs> <laughs> Remember which side of the bread you're, but it's buttered on. Amen. Jesus, All right. but you do this whole thing. It's like you compare each, other, you compare yourself to someone else and say, "Well, I'm never going to be as good as him or her." And so we we base that God loves us based on our performance, versus saying. I can love him and I can hearken to his commandments. And if I love him, I'm obedient because I got a revelation that he first loved me. He says, we love him because he first loved us. And so when, if we get this revelation that we are loved by the father first and that we're accepted by him and in that he's embraced us and he's destroyed sin, he's destroyed sickness. He's destroyed all the barriers that kept us from having intimate relationship with God. If we can receive that, then absolutely there's an overflow. You want to keep the commandments. You don't want to be in sin. You want to get into the word and you're saying, Lord, use me. And I want to give and I want to evangelize and I want to serve the kids. Why? Because now I have this resource, this foundation that I'm loved of God and I'm accepted by God. And then out of that place of who I am in the spirit, because I'm loved by God, then boy, I'm able to do all kinds of stuff and not constantly feel like, I'm not worthy, I've fallen, i failed, I'm not good enough, or I'm compared to somebody else. And this is why when we look at the love of God, it's when we receive his love for us. And even that question, how do I do it? They're looking for, I, I need to read three chapters, I need to pray in tongues this much, I need to give, I need to serve. And the thing about the love of God is that the love of God was shed abroad in your hearts. And so the thing is, when you received salvation, when you received Jesus Christ to come live in your hearts, you just didn't receive salvation of the cross. You know, okay, your sins are, are cleansed. Now you can go to heaven and all right, now I'll get to work. But when you receive Jesus, you receive the person of love inside of you. That's why the Bible talks about how we can love one another. We will be known by our love because we have love himself living inside of us. So this is where we go back to talking about intimacy with God. We start talking about intimacy with God. And when you get into the word, it's not to see how you, what you need to do. It's seeing what God has done for you because of his love. This, this whole book is a love story. And so, you know, when I start first, I was in Russia. And I was there and I'm asking God, like, what do I teach? 
Like, what do you, what is the message that the Russian people need? And he told me, he said, it's not just the Russian people. He said, I want to give you a message that the body of Christ needs. He says that you need to grow in. And he said, you, he said, Carrie, I have two things that I, and he kept taking me back to these two things. Every time I was like, Lord, what do you want to do in me this year? Oh Lord, well, you know what, you know, examine my heart. Oh Lord. He said, I want to teach you how to know my love. And he said, and I want you to love the word. Those are the two things the Lord always took me back to because the more I saw and the more I let God love me. And here's the thing from so many of you have different stories. And this is where the enemy, again, you know, the attack against the nature of God and who God really is, that he's love towards you. He's compassion towards you. He's made movement towards you for God. So loved the world he gave. He, he made movement towards you with his love, right? Where the enemy says you have to make movement towards God. Uh, you've got to do all these things for if you do these, then God's love and then God's blessing. And the more you give and the more... So all of this dynamic of God made movement towards you. So when we receive that, man, it transforms our lives, not just in salvation, but then on a daily, daily um, process. You know, I know you, that you were born again when you were a little girl. You loved God your whole life. You mm -hmm. never did just go out and do drugs and all the stuff that other people did. No. Most people would think you've loved God your whole life. And yet you're saying when you went to Russia as a missionary, God's telling you you need to... Yeah. Focus on and, and I would even say that I grew up in a, in a really great church and I heard about God's love for me. And I don't know when it was, but I did. That I got a revelation that I was loved of God. And I can't tell you that oh, I was exactly this scripture and it was exactly this song. And I got goosebumps here and I got goosebumps there. It was I heard teaching that God loved me and I chose to believe it. And I think that's the thing that. When people say, well, how, how, how do I get it? No, you just got to take it. Lord, I thank you. And I believe that you love me. I believe it without the emotions, without the goosebumps, without the three slow songs. You don't have to have an emotional experience to get a revelation because the word is constantly declaring the love of God. And as I started going through, even though I got this revelation that I was loved of God, it was just something I got. And I, I got, had a couple scriptures, but as I started getting into the word of God, that's when it revolutionized because the word of God talks about that. We would know the width, the depth, the height, and the breadth of God's love. And Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 20, it talks about that we'd be rooted and established in the love of God. And so I started finding that this understanding of God's love started to expand in my heart because what I did is I had a red pen and as I was going through, I started marking all of these spots where I saw God's love. You know, it, it's not in this Bible. I just got a new Bible, but in my old Bible, I've got red hearts almost on every single page because it is a picture. This story, this book is about the demonstrated love of God towards you. And then when you and I look at it, we can either see it through a lens of I'm not good enough. Look at all I have to do. Or we can see it through the lens of look what he did for me. Look at how much he loves me. And so I'm going to believe what this word said. I had a, I had a lady come to me in school and she said, could you counsel me? Could you mentor me in the love of God? And I said, no. I said, I want you, and I, I in, in our notes that I'm going to send you, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of pages, a whole bunch of pages of verses about God's love. And I said, find three verses, and that's all I want you to meditate on the next this, this, this next whole month I said, meditate on these three verses. And so within two days, she saw me, she says, I think she said, read, she read through all 24 pages of notes on scriptures wow. about God's love. She read through all of them. She picked three verses. And I said, now you got to declare that that's how God sees you. And she said, I can already tell a difference of how I'm feeling about myself, how I believe, because the word declares God's love. It just declares God's heart to you. And then you come to a place where I believe what the word says, whether I have emotions or not. And then what this does is the love of God. I, this is what I love about the love of God. It produces an attitude of faith because then when the enemy throws anything your way and we do have an enemy, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. But God says, but I came to give you life and give it to you with abundance. John 10, 10. He said, I came to give you this. So yes, the enemy may come, but you get to respond, not with your good works, not with your, Hey, I've read, I've prayed, I've served. So the enemy has to back off. No, you get to respond with the love of God saying, you know what? He's my father. He loves me. So this bill, guess what? It's not my bill. It's his bill. So God, I just thank you for providing. And what happens is it destroys fear. It says perfect love 
cast out fear in 1 John chapter 4. I encourage you to read, read 1 John chapter 4, get a red pen and start marking that baby up because there's so many scriptures about God's love there. And it talks about God's love towards you. It says, perfect love casts out fear. Well, I can't love God perfectly, but God loves me perfectly. And what I do is then what that love does is it starts to destroy fear. You know, God loves me. So when I was on the mission field, this happened so many times, you know, I didn't have money. I, I didn't, I, I remember one time I had no food in the fridge. All I, well, I had, I had eggs, I had eggs and salt, which you need salt for eggs. So praise God. So I had eggs and salt and I was just like, okay, Lord. And, but I had already come to a revelation three years before that in the Arctic circle going on the bus. How am I going to do this? What am I going to do? I have no money. I have to pay rent. I have to pay translators. I don't have, I'm going to need to buy food. And it was just all this stuff. And I just kept giving it to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, it's yours. And oh, oh, But what about me? What about, you know, I just this back and forth trip. And God just showed me, he said, I love you. And I called you. And if you acted in obedience, then it's my bill. That's awesome. It's my bill. And by the time, praise God, by the time I ended at home, I ended on faith. I didn't end in doubt <laughs> because it was back and forth the whole way. I ended on faith. When I went in, my dad called me and it, we talked for like 45 minutes. He said, oh yeah, by the way, your mom put $1,500 a check came in about, about three or four days ago. We just forgot to oh, tell you. Yeah. God had already forgot. provided. And he's just, listen, he said, listen, if you act in obedience, he said, if you just love me and just obey me and follow me, he said, all the relationships, all the open doors, all the favor, all the bills, they're mine. And I just got a revelation like it belongs to him. So I don't need to be worried about that. And then when, when my sister got in a horrible, like died three times on a flight for life, car accident, brain damage, all that kind of stuff, man, the first thing the enemy's telling me is you need to go home. You need to leave Russia and you need to go home and you need to support your family. And I'm just sitting there and the Lord just spoke to me. He said, I love them more. I love that's her right. more than you do. Amen. Man, that set me free when I just, it was just like the love of God became my faith that, you know what? I don't know how to respond to this situation. Oh my gosh, these people are, I got persecuted and all that kind of stuff. But you know, it was just like, man, I'm loved of God. Who cares what they think? Because the love of God ruins you for offense. Mm -hmm. The love of God. God ruins fear. And I always say, if you have fear going on in any part of your life, whether that's about your health, whether that's about your kids, whether that's about your finances, and you're just constantly, and fear will mask itself as worry. Well, I'm not, I, I'm not fearful. I'm just, I'm just really thinking about it a lot and trying to plan it out and trying to organize and trying to think, what do I do and how do I do it? A lot of times that's fear, you guys. And so I always say, if, the, if you're getting just overwhelmed by worry and you're overwhelmed by all these things, I always say that in that area, you don't have a revelation of how much God loves you. Yep. So I don't, when I'm worried about finances, I can run to scriptures about finances and, and those are blessings and those have promises for me and those are mine. But the first thing I always do and the first thing I always counsel people on when they're struggling with anything is God loves you in this area. Because he loves you, he's going to take care of you. He's a father who will love you and take care of you. And that's why it talks about this childlike faith because we get to a place where, hey, daddy loves me. And you know what? I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's only good. See, what happens is the love of God produces trust. Trust produces obedience. So I don't know what's going to happen, but God told me to do it and I'm going to be obedient even if I don't know what the end result is. But I can do that and you can do that because, hey, you know God loves you. So I may not know all the next steps, but if God's telling me to do this, give this, go here, say this, it's because he loves me. Jeremiah 29, 11, for he only has good thoughts planned towards us, thoughts to give us a future and thoughts to give us a hope. And so the love of God does, it produces this attitude and what does it produces. And when I say attitude of faith, I mean against the enemy where you're just like, hey, listen, enemy, I rebuke you. I am loved of God. Who are you to put sickness against me? I'm loved of God. The love of God lives inside of me. There's no room for sickness. Mm -hmm. And so what it does is just your approach to attacks and your approach to lies becomes completely different. And then what I love too is the love of God. And I've seen this for myself. When, when you and I, when we get a revelation of God's love, it changes the way we pray for people because instead of being like, okay, I, man, I prayed today, man, I taught today, man, I, I answered questions. I, I mean, I was beautiful. The dog was great today, even though he threw up and, you know, on the floor, hallelujah, he did. And, um, so it's just, I was, I responded 
with love and, 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 and grace. And so, yes, if you ask me for prayer right now, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to move, but don't call me yesterday when the dog pooped on the floor. Cause he also did that yesterday. Um, don't call me. And this is a dog you fought. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> else wanted it. The love of God has been challenged in me this last season. So, uh, that, that whole thing of just like, don't call me yesterday because I struggled and I got frustrated with something in the staff. I got, you know, I didn't read, I overslept, I stubbed my toe, whatever. So if you called me yesterday, no, my prayers won't work. See, so what we do is we think that God uses us based on our spiritual performance. Well, I've loved God this much today, so therefore miracles and powers will follow. The thing about the love of God is when you and I get a revelation of how much God loves us, it's not about us. When somebody comes to you and they're needing prayer, they're going through a situation, you can say, man, God loves you. Of course God wants to heal your body. You are loved of God. Of course God wants to answer this prayer for finances or this attack that you're going. You are loved by God. And so your faith is in God's love towards them. Your faith is in the finished work of the cross because that was the demonstrated love of God towards them, right? And so your faith is there. So you start praying and, and, and believing and you have faith because it's not about you. It's about God's love. That's the foundation in which you're praying. I'll tell you what you're saying is basically Galatians 5, 6, faith works by love. Exactly. And if you understand how much God loves you, it just changes everything. You can't uh, help but believe amen. that God, you are so good. And it just, faith rises. So a person who is struggling in faith is a person who's struggling to understand God's love. Yeah. And that's why when people say, ah, you know, teach me, I, I really need more faith. Like what, teach me about faith or teach me some scriptures about faith. Or I'm really having a hard time trusting God. I'm just so worried. I don't know the next step. I really want the answers. Teach me how to trust God. I don't go to trust scriptures. I, know, I go back to love of God because if you get that revelation, and again, it's already been given to you. Love already lives inside of you. But you go to this word and say, Father, I believe what it says that you have accepted me into the beloved, that you've now called me into relationship with you, that you have made me righteous uh, in the Father, that, that the fullness of the Godhead bodily now lives within me. You go to this word and say, all right, Father, I just thank you that this, this is how you see me. Because when you accept God's love, the way you believe God sees you changes. Because now you know I'm loved of God. Of course I'm his favorite. Absolutely. Well, I'm like you. I got born again when I was a kid, and I've always loved God and known that God loved me, but I didn't know the depths of it. Now, I'm still learning. Nobody's got it all figured Amen. out. But it's like Jesus said in Mark 7, 13, traditions and doctrines of man make the word of none effect. So mm -hmm. religion actually hinders us because of the things you're saying. It teaches that God loves us based on our performance. And if you have that paradigm, yeah. that wrong thinking. Well, then you read in the Bible and all you see is judgment and punishment. Mm -hmm. But once you see it through the lens of the gospel and the New Testament, you see, man, look what Jesus redeemed me from. Amen. I deserve to be turned into ashes the yeah. way that Sodom and Gomorrah was. Yep. And yet because of Jesus, I'm not. So mm -hmm. you have to get the right doctrine. If your doctrine is wrong, yeah. it hinders you understanding the love of God. Yeah, because and, and so many of you, again, like I started to say this before, so many of you have different stories. And, and I know just, and, and Andrew knows this, in working with people and loving on people and being in ministry, some of you have dealt with really, really difficult situations. There was abuse and there was violence and there was abandonment and there was, you know, you got left and you got forsaken and you got cheated on and your concept of love and has been so abused and, and, and you never saw a good example of it or rarely saw a good example of it, that you have put up a lot of barriers in your heart and you've kind of put God like, okay, God, I've accepted you. And there's some things that, yes, I'll let you touch, but I'm only going to let you come so close and touch certain things because I've been hurt too bad. And I just, I want to challenge you is, is God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. He said, I'll sing over you and dance in you and I will quiet you with my love. That's one of the scriptures in Zephaniah that I'm going to give you. The thing about God's love is he says, I'm, I'm here for you, but God's not going to force you to receive his love. See, that's, that's, that's the thing about intimacy with God. He, he made movement towards you for God so loved that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him 
See, not everybody believes the love of God, or they'll believe a certain amount, like his love is good enough to save me from hell, but his love is not strong enough to heal my heart, or it's not strong enough to heal some wounds of the past. And so we kind of put up some barriers. And my challenge for you tonight is when you look at the word of God, it, you can't look at it that it's someday, somehow God's going to love you like that once you get things in order. you got to realize that this is word has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And he's saying, now this is how I already love you right now. And if you'll believe it and start to stand on that, confess it, even if there's not all the emotions that go with it. And there's sometimes, boy, a praise and worship song will just, I mean, I'll just weep because I just feel the tangible presence of God's love. Man, I get into a mode of thankfulness and gratefulness. And I'm just like, God, you've been so faithful. You love me so much. But there's other times that it's like I'm stressed and I'm tired and I and I just made a mistake. And I'm just like, but you know what? That's not the real me. God's love lives in me. But did you know God loves you just the same? Amen. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more or anything exactly. you can do to make him love you less. Mm -mm. We could, you could keep going, but we're going to have to take I know. I know. So I just encourage you. <laughs> one, one of the things I will say is if you go to Andrew Womack Ministries, I mean, it's karisbiblecollege.org, Andrew Womack Ministries, you can see our distance education. And we have a course. It's a course that Mike and I were actually teaching this week. And you can actually get that course. You can sign up to take that course. It's called Life Foundations. And we just talk about why understanding God's love for you, not your love for God. And yes, you mm -hmm. and I can love God. That's a byproduct. Yeah, but getting a revelation of God's love for you, that it's, it's already been given towards you, and now we just get to believe it. Um, and how does that look? And so you can take that course, and it starts to talk about some life foundations, and that will be a huge blessing to you. All right, Diane from PA on chat said, when things are going good in my life, I feel like God's love is caring for me. But when things get tough, I wonder where he, where he went. Mm -hmm. Where is his promises? How do I stop this? You've talked about this, but she yeah. wrote this at the beginning of your teaching. Yeah, and Diane, I'll just, I'll just thank you because I think a lot of us are in that situation. And what we got to get to a place is that life does not dictate to us how we think God feels about us or sees us. God's love is consistent. He said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He talks about he only has good planned for us. And so again, when things are going well, yeah, of course God loves us. Of course the economy is good. Of course, every, you know, we have all these perspectives that, you know, I'm very optimistic when everything's going well. But it's when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy what, what we need to have. And that's where he goes back to the word of God. I know what his word says. So no matter how I see, no matter what I see, no matter what I feel, God's word and his promises are real. So I'm going to stand on that. And you don't just sit there and like, well, I don't feel it. No, you stand up and you start confessing it and you tell your situations and you tell your emotions, emotions, you are loved by God, situations, you are loved by God. So I speak to these things and you speak with authority over them because then you're able to use those promises and say, this promise is mine, not just because it's a promise out of the word of God. It's, it's a promise that was birthed out of the love of God for me, and that's the power. There is confusion in our society today. People think love is an emotion, mm -hmm. and it affects your emotions, but yeah. it's not an emotion. Yeah. When Jesus hung on the cross, he wasn't having goosebumps go up and down his spine and feeling just this compassion. He yeah. was feeling pain. He was being rejected, and yet he did what was right. Yeah. So... In a way, that question shows the problem. Yeah. Is that they're wanting to feel the love of God and praise God if you feel it, but if you don't, it doesn't change anything. Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that God so loved the world that he gave. Here's Ruthie on chat, and she said this. She's a regular. Ruthie's always with yeah. us. And she says, how do you receive a revelation of his love for you and stop comparing him to people? For example, sometimes it seems like, how can he love me when it seems people have rejected me. How do you get the head knowledge into your heart? Yeah, that's really good. And and I'll just tell you this: that you start with putting the, you start with putting the Word of God inside of you. And I know a lot of people they'll they'll you know they pray one prayer and they read one verse and say, well, I didn't get a revelation, so I guess that's it. It talks about when you seek the Lord with all your heart, you shall find Him. And I just want I just want to say this for myself, and I'll give this as a testimony. Getting a revelation of God's love and going through the word of God was something I became diligent at. Not that I worked to get God's love. 
I had to eliminate some of the other voices that were telling me who God was, who I was, whether that was television, watching a whole bunch of clean romantic comedies, oh, love, you know, as a single girl, oh, I really want that. No, you know what? I had to still a lot of different voices and say, you know what, Lord, I'm pursuing you. It's something you've already given me, but I also need to get into the place where I am meditating on it. And that was a huge thing for me as I started to meditate on these verses about God's love. And and that became, and there was just moments where it's just like, I can't tell you when or how, there's no formula. It's just let God love you and just say, Lord, I just thank you. I pray in the spirit before I read the word, Lord, I just thank you. You said you love me. So I just thank you for that revelation. I thank you. It's already in me. It's in my spirit. So Lord, I just thank you. You, you Holy Spirit will lead me and guide me into all truth and understanding. So I wasn't waiting. Like, is it going to happen? I confessed it was going to happen. I'm going to get a revelation on God's love, but I know that my revelation of God's love today at 40 is radically different than I was at 21. And I know it will be radically different at 45 and at 60 and at 70. Why? Because I get to keep making that a foundation. It's not just a one-time revelation. Sometimes people want this one-time revelation. They want to be lazy, get a one-time revelation and just carry them. But intimacy with God and, and it's just like a husband and wife, you don't be like, I married you, hallelujah, amen. And then you go live your own life. 20 years ago, we were passionate and that's good enough. That's good enough. I said, <laughs> I love you then. And, and that's okay. So I can just, just I can ignore you, know. you and I can have all these other suitors in my life and other voices in my life and somehow still have a really strong marriage. That's not going to work. And so it's, it's just that aspect of, of getting into the presence of God and, and just saying, Lord, I know you love me, so just show me how to receive it. You know, I've had some really dramatic experiences with the Lord, so much so that after they wear off, when I was in Vietnam, I wasn't feeling anything. And I actually spent 13 months asking God to kill me, mm. not because of Vietnam, but because I thought, well, I can't have this emotion. It was a one-time thing? Yeah, and I couldn't get it back, and I didn't know how to live without it. And I had to just start taking what the Word says and not go by emotion yep. and stuff. And it really, uh, there is a lot of confusion on what love is, I think. Yep. It's all a feeling. Yeah. So here's Cowboy Tom. He was with us on our Truth and Liberty broadcast last night. He's, he's with us a lot. And it says, could you please explain the difference between love and feelings and your personal will related to those things. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we've been. Yeah, it's basically talking. what we've been talking about. And the thing is we have made emotions such a dictating, confirming voice of things. And that's why the enemy will, will try to make uh, your feelings and emotions like the, the end point, the exclamation or the period, like, well, I guess it's God because I feel excited. Well, guess what? There's going to be things that God asks you to do that you're not really excited about. There's going to be things, sin can be very exciting, but just because it's exciting doesn't mean it's God. And so we have to get to a place where, and again, this goes back to your teaching on spirit, soul, and body. And that's why right after in Life Foundations that we teach the love of God, we teach spirit, soul, and body as a life foundation. Because when you understand who you are in the spirit, it radically changes the way you understand God's love. Because now I'm not trying to get God's love just out of my flesh and emotion and goosebumps. I'm not just trying to feel it in the moment, but it's a bigger revelation of this is who I am in the spirit. I am loved of God. I've been accepted into the beloved. I've been made cleansed. I've been made righteous. I've been, I've been given all all of the gifts of the spirit. I have been, so you start to get on this revelation of who you are in the spirit. And then you look at every situation and every emotion through that lens of the word of who you are in the spirit. It'll radically change how you receive the love of God. Here's a really good question from Erica on Facebook it says, why does it feel like some people get the more important in quotation mark purpose and calling while others just don't seem to, does God love those people more that's why he chooses them over others. Mm, that's a good question. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, I wanted to do great, great, great things for God. And, um, you know, I, I, I look, I mean, I read all kinds of missionary books and uh, around, you know, ministers and, and things like that. And the enemies tried to, tried to tell me uh, as a young kid, you can't be anything because of who you are. Basically, I was a farm girl. I was homeschooled. I lived in a town of 100 people or 350, might as well have been 100. But you know, just that I was highly rejected and persecuted for being a believer. Um, and so how could God use you? I mean, it's the people who 
and all this stuff, you know, and, and then all the, the, the points after that, you're not those people. And again, uh, going back to the love of God, that was the biggest thing that I learned as a kid is that God loved me. And then again, as a homeschooler, <laughs> um, mom gave me my math book, my algebra book. I didn't do it. Uh, I, I instead, what happened is I didn't understand a lot of things. Um, so it, I ended up spending um, 10, 12 hours in the Word, work, writing lessons and studying the Word of God uh, as junior high and high school. And, and how's your math? <laughs> I asked my husband. He's brilliant at math. And you're running all of our offices worldwide. Praise God I for take care. I care, take care of the relational side. He takes care of the financial Amen. budget side. So. So, so, you know, just this dynamic that I, because I spent time in the word of God, it, it became not about who I was or where I came from, but about what the word declared. And so what you, what you do is when you realize that you have the spirit of God in you, then you have to change what you think is more important because God doesn't see, oh, well, the preachers are more important than the, the children's workers and, and people that are called to Africa are more important than somebody, you know, uh, working at the local gas station. He called us to be salt and light. He didn't say you have to have a position or title to be used of God. He said, I've called you to be salt. I've called you to be life. I've called you to disciple. So discipling and, and ministering to people becomes the call. Now, how that looks and how many people you reach and what title you have, that's what the world has put value on, but that's not what God puts value on. So you have to stop evaluating what is big calls and little calls and just say, I know who my God is. I know who my God is within me. And am I in the right season right now? Now, if you're connected to the vine in John chapter 15, if you're connected to the vine, you abide in him and he abides in you, you will bear much fruit. What your fruit looks like is going to look different from my fruit. But when we both stand before God, he's going to judge the fruit that he called us to live to because we were connected to him. Not because we were connected to a title, not because we're connected to an organization. Yeah, I would say, Erica, that this question that you asked shows that you are looking at what a person does as establishing their worth and importance. Yeah. And again, that's missing the point. I'm not saying this in a critical way, but it's just missing the point that your identity, you think that, you know, because I've got a worldwide ministry and we've built $120 million worth of facilities that somehow or another God loves me more. My identity isn't in these things. I was out walking today and thinking, Father, you know, it is awesome that you love me. And I was just basking in his love for me, not in the things doing. So when you are looking at, I, I'm not doing anything important, how could God love me? You don't understand the love of God. Not critical of you, I'm just saying that you need to get into the Word and find out that God's love is completely Amen. independent of what you deserve or what you've done. Amen. God loves you because he is loved, not because you are lovely. Yeah. And once you get that revelation, it yeah. changes everything. Amen. And God's definition of success and fruitfulness is different than what you and I Absolutely. consider. And we say, hey, man, I've got lots of bank account. I've got lots of people following me on Facebook and on this and that. But it says we can have all these things but have not love. You're nothing. You're nothing. And he, and he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And, and I've taught this before, I think, here on, on Tuesday Night Bible Study. There's a difference between results and fruit radical. I can produce all kinds of results. I can do all kinds of things. I can hammer out a to-do list all day long, but that doesn't mean I was fruitful. And so you may see other people and go, oh, wow. And, and they'll stand before God one day and it's either going to be results or it's going to be fruit. And it was it in obedience to him. And so I just would say, Erica and any other person, just evaluate your life and say, Lord, am I in obedience to you? Am I where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And if that's and I just feel like there's some moms watching this. If you're a mom at home and you're like, I never even get out. I, I just, I, I just, I feel like there's a call of God in my life, but I'm just not doing it. Let me tell you right now, the children that you are ministering to right now in your home, they are the arrows and the legacy you take into the next generation. They will just don't underestimate how God sees what you're doing. It's like that little widow or the widow that cast in two mites. Yeah. And these people gave large amounts of money. And God said, this woman gave more than everybody. Yeah. God sees things differently than people do. He's looking at your heart. And, you know, you could have huge results. And yet if your heart isn't really in love with the Lord and you're more goal-oriented than you are relationship-oriented, 
um, you're going to be surprised. Some of the people who've got huge ministries that are on the um, picture of all the magazines are going to be at the back of the line Yeah. when some of these little people yeah. that have never gotten attention, just they love God. I think of Dottie Heyman right now. You can go to our website and look up Dottie Heyman's destiny story. And this woman went to Africa, I think 13 or 14 years ago, yeah. had $500, and she has never been home. And she has adopted, I think, 13 or 14 kids, feeds something like uh, 200 widows. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure the details. Matter of fact, Dottie watches this often, her and her kids. And Dottie is just doing things that I tell you, Paul Milligan, my CEO, and I were over at her place. And Paul said, you know, when we get to heaven, I'm going to be at the back of the line. Dottie's going to be way <laughs> up there ahead of me. That woman, you probably don't know her, but God's using her in a powerful way. Yeah. So God loves us independent of our performance. And, mm, and you just, you cannot tie God's love to your performance or to anything else. The moment you do, you weaken it. Yeah. God so loved the world, not because we deserved it, not because he pitied us, but he just loves us. God That's is right. love. We're out of time. We're out of time. Woo! So you, you thank you. You good. Thank you very much. I appreciate much. you sharing that. And <laughs> I believe a lot of people will be blessed. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of the, the uh, questions. questions, but on every Tuesday, yeah. Barry Bennett in the afternoon comes on and answers most of the questions that we weren't able to get yeah. to. So how do they do that? If they get on... Our yeah, website so, and click something. Yeah, so if you're on Facebook, I, I would encourage you, if you're on Facebook and you haven't, go to Andrew Womack Ministries, the Facebook, our Facebook page, hit like, and that means that then on your Facebook feed, uh, notifications, uh, things are going to come up, as well as our Tuesday uh, live stream question and answer time. So it's about for 20 minutes, and that's a really great place to go so and get those. So if you click like. When we go live on Tuesday, you'll automatically be yep. notified yep. and you It'll can listen up. and your question might be answered. Yeah. And let me just mention again that we have a lot of people over uh, just over in another room that are there to answer your questions. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry we didn't get to them all, but I guarantee you we've got materials on this and we've got some of the best people that can yeah. pray with you and help you. And they would love to help you and answer these questions. So go to 719-635-1111 and people will be glad to... Take your Amen. questions, answer your questions, yeah. help you any way that we can. Ask, ask. Andrew's got a lot of material also on God's love. And just ask, you know, what does Andrew have on God's love? Please ask for that because it's it's about hearing it. So sometimes, again, we have such things with our past. We just don't think that we are lovely or lovable. And God, boy, God saw you as someone worth Amen. pursuing. That's why his compassion made movement towards you. You know so. what gives your life value is not your accomplishments. It's the fact that yeah. God Almighty mm -hmm. valued you enough to die for you. That yeah. put a value on you that's greater Amen. than anything else. And that's where you need to find God's love is in the fact that he loved you, not what you have done for him. Amen. Amen. Value. So anyway, we, oh, we got to quit, but we love you and God loves you. Amen. Glad that you joined us. Join us again next Tuesday for our Tuesday night live Bible study. Amen. Join us next Tuesday for our live Bible study. To receive notes and to win giveaways, visit our website, 